Hey everybody, Senior Blood Nine Instructor Stephen Keim here. In today's video, we're going back to Sword and Buckler. We're going to show you three commonly made mistakes and ways you can correct them in yourself and in your students. We'll begin with the sword and the proper structure of throwing a cut. When a cut is thrown, in this example from award number two, occasionally the fighter will cast the wrist, thinking it'll provide them with additional reach. The cost of this, however, is the cut lacks power and structure. To correct this, it's important to understand that your fingers play an important role. While I'm in my ward position before the cut is thrown, my fingers are relaxed and open. When I throw the cut, right at the moment of impact, my grip tightens and I want to make sure that my wrist is in a proper handshake position. This will adequately impart force onto my target. The second most common error you see in sword and buckler happens when you're throwing the same cut that we've just demonstrated. Now, as I throw the cut, you notice that my sword hand goes past the rim of my buckler. This puts my weapon hand at undue risk. An easy way to correct this is to make sure my shoulders are squared throughout all of my cutting actions and motions. Here I am throwing the same cut, and because my shoulders are square, my hands never go past the rim of the buckler and are afforded as much protection as I can give them. A strike to my sword hand from a martial standpoint is considered a primary target, as once my sword hand is crippled, I can quickly expect a fight-ending strike from my opponent. From a training standpoint, it's important not to expose your hand because this can lead to training accidents and a broken hand will be a huge setback to your progress. The third and final flaw we're going to cover pertains to the buckler itself and he's usually more dominant in newer practitioners. Here I am in a sparring stance. Notice how my buckler is way too close to my body. This provides my head and shoulders with absolutely no protection, which means a more experienced fighter or somebody with a more refined sense of measure can hit my head pretty much at will. It's important to note as well that training with heavier bucklers can often lead to this being a habit. Unfortunately, there's no real trick or tip to fix this flaw. The best thing you can do is to remind your students that this is an error and that they should bring their buckler out to keep themselves better protected. If it persists during sparring time, just hit them in the head repeatedly, and when they ask you how you were able to do that so easily, you can remind them that it's because they kept their buckler too close to their bodies. There are guard positions that utilize having the buckler close to your body, such as ward number four or priest special long point, but we're gonna address those in greater detail in a future video. We hope this video was beneficial to you. If it was, please like and subscribe so we can continue to bring you more content about this art that we love so much. As well, thank you to our Patreon subscribers for their continued support. We couldn't do it without you. And remember fighters, train how you fight so you can fight how you train.